calendars out February 17th February 18th live trading San Diego we got the Lowe's Coronado I mean what else would you want this event is limited to 50 people look at your calendar clear it make sure you show up if you want to be a rebel this is the place to be you got to sign up for it now giddy up baby Hey, good afternoon, Market Rebels, and to all of our YouTubers. We're back. It's that time, 4 o'clock for Coach's Corner. And today we got first repeat. We have Elliot Katz. Mm -hmm. Elliot, what's going on? I uh, should have Elliot Katz. Elliot Katz. There's your repeat. Hey, I'm happy to be here. I'm all happy right. to be here. Yeah. Hey, of course, every, uh, everybody knows Stu. Hey there. Good all to right. be here. Thanks, Bill. And his hat that got caught in a boating accident. It's become really? a legend. Yes. It is a so got a nice little pop in the markets today. We had uh, GDP was expected to come in at 2.7%. Annualized came in at 2.9. So again, things are still some uncertainty out there, but it's always more about the direction than about the numbers. And so right now, at least everything seems to be moving in the right direction, assuming you're bullish. But we have another cool topic for everyone today. And remember, really the angle that we're coming at from Coach's Corner is to help you make better decisions, understand trading and options, decision theory from a professional trader's viewpoint. So everybody knows Stu, 29 years on the Philex, and Elliot Cat has just got so much experience from floor trading and SIBO. So we've got two really super professional coaches, full-time coaches here at Market Rebellion, that are going to help you with what I think is probably one of the more important topics. And we're going to kick things off with Chalk Talk. Now remember Chalk Talk's our little kind of a trivia question up front that we'll answer at the end. So here we go, guys. We got two vertical spreads. One is pay four to make one. These are $5 spreads. And another one where you can pay one to make four. So they have the same underlying, same time to expiration. Everything else is the same. And the question is, which one has less risk? So for all of you out there in, in the uh, YouTube land, go ahead and jot that down. What do you think, which one has less risk? And that's really the topic that we're going to talk about. Again, it's one of the most important misunderstood topics in all of trading. And that is the risk reward ratio. We hear this all the time. I know Stu, we get it all the time in Q&A and from coaching. Elliot, I'm sure you get it too. We're going to put Elliot to the test today to have hear his input on this. But what we're talking about is when traders say, let's say for a particular strategy, oh, I've got a four to one risk reward ratio or eight to one and they'll usually say well i can win eight but i can only lose one and therefore it's got very low risk because i'm a, i can only spend a dollar or only lose a dollar but look how much i can make and that's what we're talking about is this risk reward ratio so let's go find out what the misperceptions are first so the yeah, it's really the wrong question oh it totally it's, it's is the wrong yeah. question yeah yeah so the common view for most traders is that they might say that you can pay one to make four, and they would flip that and say it's a four to one risk reward ratio. And the reason that traders think this makes sense is they'll say, well, I've only got a little bit of risk. 
Again, I'm only spending a dollar, but I can make a lot of money. And they'll say worse, oh, I, I'm minimizing my risk and I'm maximizing my reward. And this is exactly opposite of what's happening as we'll show. But the first thing to understand and one of the repeat themes of today is that the amount of money you invest does not define the risk. If you invest a yeah. dollar into a vertical spread, it does not mean it's low risk. If you invest a million dollars into a T-bill, it doesn't mean that it's high risk. It's just the opposite. So kind of remember that it's not the amount of money. Risk is always about the probability of loss. It's got nothing to do with the size of the reward or the, the amount that you invested. All right, so that's going to be our topic here today, guys. And to kick things the, off. The, 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 pro the problem that people run into, it's, it's, a, it's just part of their, their ken, you know, it's part of their mindset. Uh, people, people, I think, for the most part, they, they define their risk as they're trying to define, come up with what their risk is, as they're Absolutely. trying to define it. They're defining it by merely that one dimensional dollars amount that they have on the table. Which, of Absolutely. course, is, you know, everybody's got a different viewpoint on that. I mean, there's no common denominator at all. It's not about the amount of money. It's about the probability of the win or the loss. Correct. And that's what we want to show here. And what I think is a really cool way to do it, we're going to do a little pricing game. And I know people, it's been a while since we've done it in Q&A, but some of our Q&A people will recall this. But I think it's a really good example that will show you exactly what's happening when you get something like a four to one risk reward ratio. Doesn't mean it's bad, but it definitely will show that it is not low risk and high reward. Okay. That you're yeah, none of this is bad. Minimizing none, none, risk. Of this, none of this is good, bad, or indifferent. It's just it's just the trader needing to know what they're up against. That's exactly it. Hey, yeah, in Bill, order to make I the decisions, just, you have to know what the risk is. Bill, if I could just chime in. Uh, one of the things that the coaches work on a lot with folks is to get them to understand that the option market, just like in economics, it's fair. OK, there sometimes there's an anomaly, but certainly not this the way that, that Stu and I think. grew up with. Yeah. Right. So if everything is priced fairly, you should be getting paid. The correct amount potentially for the risk that you're taking. So as as you will see, right, as Stu just mentioned, think about it in terms of the option market being fair. There's no way to game the system. So right. if we think about risk as the probability of loss, things will start coming a lot more into focus. You'll understand why maybe things aren't exactly the way you think they are in the options market, because we're talking about different types of probabilities. That's exactly it. So it's always a key about probability of loss. So to show where these risk reward ratios come from, and as Elliot mentioned, for the most part, things are fair. Why would somebody pay one to make four or why would somebody sell that? The bigger question is why, and that will give you some insight. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to play a little hypothetical pricing game, and it's up to you all of our YouTubers out there. We're going to play three games. We're going to show you the reward. I'm going to fix the reward at 100 bucks. And the question is, how much would you be willing to play for the chance to win this $100 reward? Now, of course, this $100 reward in our game here goes to one person, to the highest bidder, just like it does in a real market. So you might say, hey, I'd be willing to bid 10 cents for a $100 bill. Well, of course you would, but you're not going to win. So part of it, you have to think of what is most likely going to win each of these games. All right, guys, so here we go. Here's our first one. Ooh, look at that, Stu. I like that, guaranteed. It's a guaranteed $100 bill. So here's the deal. Standing up here with a fresh, crisp $100 bill, no strings attached. If you are the highest bidder, you're going to walk up here. Let's say we're in a big room. I'm going to hand you the, high, the $100 bill, but you've got to pay for it. You have to be the okay. highest bidder. So, all right. So what okay. do you, let, let's hear, let's start with Stu. What do you think is going to happen in this market for a price? All right. So Elliot, how about you and I make a market? Ready? I'll pay 40 bucks for it. Ooh. Go ahead, Elliot. Is, is, does this have to be the closest without going over? Like the price <laughs> exactly. is right? Just, just whatever you want to bid. 41. I'm 50 bid. 60. I'm 70 bid. Now, hold, hold on a second. Now, hold, wait, here's, here's what's interesting. If Stu's willing to bid 60, he could make 40 bucks on that. Why, why, did you, why would you outbid him? 
Why would I outbid him? Yeah, why would you outbid him when he's got this nice big fat profit of 40 bucks? Because unless you're some liar to me, you told me my $100 is guaranteed. <laughs> right. So you're going to say if it's guaranteed, Stu had a nice guaranteed 40 bucks, you might as well take 39. And, and that's let's, the process let's, let's here. So like what's going to happen with our markets here, Stu? Keep bidding. So let's relate this to the options market real quick, right? So if it's guaranteed, then I'm guaranteed to get the money. So why wouldn't I pay the highest possible number that's under 100 to get exactly. the money if it's guaranteed? Or right. theoretically, Profit. even even up to 100. This, this really, even mathematically up, oh, speaking, be... is no different than walking into a bank and saying, here are here are five twenties for a hundred or a hundred, fifty two fifties for a hundred. You shouldn't expect wow. to get ninety nine dollars in exchange. It's just an instantaneous change. There's no time delay, which would change things. It's just yeah, but it, I, so. What what do you I think our make, bids will go up to? What do I think they'll go up to? Ninety nine dollars yeah. and ninety nine cents. Probably. What do you think, Elliot? Kind of ninety nine and a half cents. Yeah, it's probably, <laughs> so even though theoretically, <laughs> no, theoretically it's worth 100. Some people are going to say, Stu wins. if this were a market, it's not worth my time to just have these things transact yeah, for there. Somebody business. eventually is going to, somebody eventually story. is going to say it's, they can have it, but it's going to get really close to 100. Hey, Bill. So, so, so whether you think it should be mm -hmm. 9950 or 99 some, or even 100, that's really irrelevant. That could change from market to market. The point that I want everyone to see is it should be really close to 100. Yeah, Elliot. No, so when we when we were kind of playing around with this yesterday, a word came up later in the presentation. And I'm going to put that, that word out there now because if you can think about this word as we're going through each one of these things as it relates to options, all this will start coming in clearer, okay? In this case, there was no uncertainty. Right. It was $100 you were going to get it regardless. There was no chance you would not get the $100. Right. Right? So the and value. And the market had all the information. Right. And we all had the same information. Very good. All that the was market great. had all the same That's information. Right. Right. That's right. So there is no, we don't want to, we don't want to, we don't want to discount we don't, there, there is not going to be any discount to that final value because there's None. no uncertainty. Right. If an effort were that you were going to have to wait three months, and it was going to get mailed to you, different mm -hmm. story. We'd have it discounted slightly for the time value. Right. But if mm -hmm. it's just going to be an instantaneous change, yep. it should go right up to a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, to continue relating it to the options market, we don't really know if the size of the reward is exactly a hundred. But I'm trying to show you the idea behind it. People say, I kind of think this stock might be up five or $10. There's some type of potential intrinsic value. There's some type of probability. So we're just trying to strip okay. out all of the uncertainty. We're going to make now, it next very time, clean and neat. So, ne so next time you see somebody out there sees an option that's uh, eight and a half dollars, uh, before you start saying this is expensive, think about what we just did. Why did somebody pay it? There, there's a reason why it's eight and a half dollars. It's about the probability of the stock moving some amount of money in some direction in the future. It's exactly. the market playing a fair game. Yep. Mm -hmm. So let's now keep the same idea, same hundred bucks, but now what we're going to do is introduce some risk. So same game, I'm standing up here in front of the room with a fresh crisp hundred dollar bill. But if you're the high bidder, you get to walk up to the front of the room. I'm going to flip a coin. And if it's heads, you get the hundred bucks. Otherwise, you lose the amount that you're going to bid. Actually, you always lose that. You have to pay to come up to play the game. So now we're not, mm -hmm. a, we were just talking about the other one was certain. Now it's yeah. not so certain. What do you think is going to happen yeah. to the bidding process now? Well, it's going to happen, but it's going to stop at some point. And where, where would you think? What would be your guess? Well, uh, let's do it again. All right, $25, $25 bid. 30, 30, 35, 40, 45, 49. <laughs> I'll let you get the last one. At 51. Starting to slow down, slow down, slowing down the bids. Did Let's you say 51? At 51, at 51. I'll sell it to you at 51. So oh, that's the fair. No. 49 offered 51. So oh, yeah, yes, I, thought, exactly. I thought we were bidding against each other. I didn't well, think we, we are. You know, 49.99 is your number. 50 yeah. is, is no. even. 
no, I'm out at 50. I'm not taking that 50. If you wanted to bid at 51, I'd sell it to you because yeah, I have. A absolutely. So here, here's the point to see. There's a 50% chance of winning 100 bucks. You multiply those together. Theoretically, it's worth 50. So what would happen in the long run? You would have to play twice, spend 50 the first time and lose, spend 50 the second time and win. You've spent 100, you've collected 100. It's a fair game. But it you're, only like playing this, walk, you're only right. You're only playing this once. And so as Elliot just said, I don't want to play for 50, even though it's a fair game. And this is also part of a market too. People will start saying, I, I want a little bit of a risk premium here. So again, whether we get exactly 50, 49, 90, doesn't really matter. The point to see is we got nowhere close to a hundred. And that's because we now have uncertainty. It was the same reward. Right. Everything was the same. All I've done is mm -hmm. I've introduced some risk. So, right, so let's so, hold that thought. So, so Bill, yeah. I still wouldn't, I still might want to have a, a large discount to 50. Why? Because even I know over time, even though I know over time it's random, the next flip could also be tails. I could get four tails in a row. Yes, you before could. Before I get ahead. Right? Correct. So Correct. even yeah, though right. it is, That's even though, yeah. even though each, each individual event is random and over time it'll be 50 50. Sure. And we talked about this yesterday. We talked about trending stocks, right? You could have five heads in a row or five Easily. tails in a row, yep. but eventually it'll be 50 50. Sure. And but here's the other thing you can't wait, Stu. Thousand. What? Well, this game is of course, assuming there's a thousand or 10,000 flips. Absolutely. But the next one could still be a loser. Yeah. yeah. But, but the thing to see is you can't demand too much of a discount because if you say, oh, I would only right. bid 40 for it. Well, somebody right. else is going to say, you know what, I'll do it for 41. Absolutely. So there comes right, a point where you're going to have tolerance. to get you're going to have right. to get pretty close to 50. That's mm -hmm. really the main thing I want everybody to see. All right. Hold those thoughts. Let's go to game number three. Uh, Same hundred bucks. Games. But now we're going to pull out a well shuffled deck of cards. We're going to fan them out. And if you draw the ace of spades, now you win the hundred bucks. Otherwise, you walk away a loser. What do you think is going to happen to our market? Let's open up for bidding here. What are you going to where are you going to start, Stu? Uh, well, uh, you start at 30 like out, you did before. Um, I got to figure out the probability of winning. And that would be a one out of 52 chance. And I guess that's kind of my number. There you All go. Right, so one divided by 52 is what? Two bucks? Close. About, be about buck ninety-two. Buck ninety. Well, I can somewhere in there. I can bid a dollar. One bid. All right, Stu goes one bid. What are you gonna do, Elliot? Well, I think we know how this is gonna go. I'll go up to one forty. Okay. Uh, one, you know, one ninety. Right. Right. And uh, so if if it turns out to be one ninety-two, maybe I'll do one ninety-one. But you, I think folks are getting the point, right? Yeah, you get the point. Do you see how they slowed down the process? Before they were jumping out of the gates at 40 for the first game and went right up to 100. And now they, Stu is reluctant to even go a buck. And the incremental amounts are going, I just don't know if I want to play this. Why? They were sensing that there's risk. They were sensing that they were most likely going to lose. Does that mean it's a bad game? No. For a price, it's a good game. But that's the key for a price. So yes, our bidding is probably going to go up along here now. As we said, I think the fair value is around a buck ninety-two. But just yeah. for clarity, to keep it easily in your head, I'm just going to make it two to round yeah. it up. But you, do you yeah. see what's happening with the prices here? Now let's go up to the price. The, the let's price go and analyze is here, the probability. Exactly right, right to the risk. Right. So quick little blurb here for everybody who's interested in options trading. Check out marketrebellion.com forward slash get started. Lots of free stuff on there to help you get started. So here's the way that we've got our games. The first one we got, let's say roughly maybe 99 bucks. A trader could rephrase this as saying, I have to pay 99 to make one. That's our risk reward ratio. For the coin game, they might say, I have to pay 50 to make 50. They would put it in yeah, risk reward. 99 to make 100. And then, and then the first one, they would have to, well, the net is, yes, they're pulling in a hundred, but what's the net to them? Oh, to make a dollar, got it. They, okay. they would make a right. dollar. That would be their profit. And for the card game, they get to pay two to make 98. So now that you're seeing what's happening, watch where these prices are coming from. As we move from the guaranteed game to the coin flip, what happened to the price? Mm. Price went down and the reward went up. 
-hmm. We went from 99 to 50, price got bid down, and that left more of a reward. That's how the rewards get bigger is because people are bidding down the prices because of the risk. As we introduce more risk to the card game, price went from 50 down to two, and the reward went from 50 up to 98. So That's Bill, where you're, isn't this yeah. the exact opposite of the general perception? It of is exactly. That's what price. we're trying to show. It is exactly opposite. People think that paying two to make ninety eight is safe because they'll say, "Oh, I'm only risking two, but oh my gosh, I can make ninety eight. I'm minimizing my risk and I'm maximizing my reward." And then they look at the guy up on top. They're going, "What a moron! Why would you pay nine? That makes absolutely no sense. Why would you pay ninety nine to only make a dollar?" You're risking $99 to make a buck. And what they're assuming the is that all of these probabilities are the same. The real question on number one is who would not pay 99 to make once you, a dollar? That's what we tried to show. Once you realize where those prices are coming from, there's a reason people bid it up to 99 because there's no yeah. reason not to. Yeah. Yep. So now let's take a different look at it. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of times traders will say, oh, I've got a strategy that will maximize your returns and minimize your risk. I love that when they talk about that because you cannot maximize one variable while minimizing another. Price makes all of your investments equally attractive. So if somebody says, which of these is better? Don't know, they're all the same. Well, the card game has a much higher reward. Yes, it does, but it also has a much higher risk. Now, the guaranteed game is good because it's guaranteed, true, but it has a very low reward. The price equalizes them. If they, if they aren't equalized, the bidding is going to go up and down until we can't quite differentiate them. So here's why it's wrong when traders say they can minimize risk and maximize reward. If that were true, that means we have a market where you could play the guaranteed game, get, but get paid 98 bucks for your reward. That's minimizing risk and maximizing reward. Now, hopefully, hopefully, Stu, they're seeing that that can't happen. Right. In fact, if you if you think about it, awesome. if that if that were able to appear in the marketplace based on the rules of arbitrage, everybody would do it and then they would close it up. So we'll close even it right if it up. were there, it couldn't last very long. It could it would not last a, a nanosecond, correct. Especially in let today's me, markets. Let me, take a, let me take a just a second to just kind of sure. bring this into the real world options market. Sure. So a good example might be an out of the money spread. You could buy an out of the money spread, a $5 out of the money spread for a dollar, uh, thinking that it's relatively low risk because it's only a dollar. So, you know, what if I lose it? Who cares? It's not really going to mean anything. Um, but on this, at the same time, it's the stock must move a certain amount of dollars in a certain amount of time. And that presents a higher risk level, even though it's still a dollar, it's a higher risk level, Much as higher opposed risk. to maybe money spread, uh, which is going to cost more. So, right. It's like, well, it's not the guaranteed, but it's pushing towards there. Uh, it's going to cost more and you're going to make less, but it's a higher probability of winning. And Absolutely. that's a good example of the options world of what this actually means. Absolutely true. Now, let's take it a step further. Let's help our, our traders out there, Stu and Elliot, about converting odds to probability. Now, it's not that we want you to go out and start doing sports bets, but we're trying to help you to understand why it's, why it's wrong when people say that four to one is better or eight to one is better. It's different. So if something is given to you in odds, let's say four to one odds, it's usually against if the bigger number is up front. So if they just say they're four to one odds, it's implied that it's against you. What you do is you take the bottom number, one divided by the sum of the two is one out of five. It's implying that there's a 20% chance to win. Which if means what? What's the other side of that statement? 80% chance to lose. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. And, and, and we're going to look at that. Have to do. There's always the other side. And it really and helps to look at the other side. I've said this before. If there's a 20% chance to win, there's an 80% chance to lose. If there's an 80% chance to win, there's a 20% chance to lose. You're going to pay that's more what we're looking the at here. The, the person that takes the other side of the bet would have one to four odds. And that's usually called odds on. In other words, mm -hmm. the probabilities in your favor. But look what happened to our risk reward ratio. Now we take four, the bottom number, divided by the sum. Four out of five is now there's an 80% chance to win. You're just on the other side of the trade. Yeah. And the problem is, is that people think that why would you bet one to make four? It's because you got an 80% chance to win. It doesn't mean that it's the bet you have to do, but you have to realize that's why it's mathematically fair and why it makes sense. So let's say that we have uh, 
five numbers we're going to throw into a hat. We're going to do a little game here. If we have four to one odds against, if you draw maybe the number one, you get to win a prize. What are the odds? We'll take a look. You have one space working for you and you have four spaces working against. That's how easy it is. How many spaces are working for you? How many against? That's four to one odds against you. Or in trading terms, you can pay one to make four. But again, mm -hmm. here's where traders make the mistake. They say, oh, it's low risk because I only pay, I'm only risking a dollar to make four dollars. It's not, right. it's high risk, right. which is why you're paying one to make risk. Four. They're correlating the word risk to With the dollars. amount of dollars. That is the big mistake. And that's, and that's why I'm very much against when people say, oh, you're only risking X amount to make a much bigger amount. You must you're risking a small amount to make a big amount. It's high risk. You have to adjust for the probability. The chances of you losing 100% of your money in this case is very high. Very high. And that's the part that they overlook and, because they and, see risk as the dollar. Yeah. But that doesn't make it bad. Let's make no, that. No, 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 no. Absolutely I'm not true. saying it's bad. It, it's just bad it if you think it's low risk. Right. So when That's I talk to my students, I'll tell you, when I talk to my students, I always tell them, I'm going to show you how this works, because whatever you decide to do, you got to know ahead of time what you're getting yourself into. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. What is the proper expectation? What expectation do I have for a spread? We'll come back to it. That I pay four for that I can only make one versus right. a spread I, I'm paying one for and I can make four. Right. Well, let me make sure I understand so that I have the proper expectations, not just looking at the dollar now. Exactly. And we can do that in a lot of the platforms. TOS Absolutely. will show you how to analyze that. So now let's see if our people have learned anything here, Stu. How would you like a trade that pays 35 to one? All right. This again, oh, think about this like is the way that most deal. people hear it. I got a trade for you, Stu, 35 to one. How can you turn it down? You're only risking a dollar and you can win 35 times your money. I'll make it even better. How about if I buy a lottery ticket and I can win a hundred million? Is that better? It, it, it's Good about point. what's the probability of winning that money? Ooh. That's what it's all about. Look at Stu. Would go. I take a trade and pay 35 to one? What's my chances of winning it? Very beautiful. I, I knew know. I wasn't going to fool you. Know, you. If it's 2% if it's chance of winning it, I'm probably not going to take it. You know? <laughs> Unless I just want to entertain myself. Sure. But this is the part that we're trying to show people. Whenever you're presented with stuff like this, oh, here's a four to one or an eight to one, it doesn't mean it's low risk and high reward. That's what everybody jumps on. So here's one that's 35. If you think four to one is good, I picked this example for a reason. 35 to one has to be off the rails good. Well, you want 35 to one? There you go. You can get it. Just go to Vegas. Bet on a single number on roulette, you got 35 to one. But there's a problem here, guys. How many spaces, Elliot, how many spaces are an American roulette wheel? 38. You got 38, 38, but they're only paying you off at 35. That's why it's great to be the casino. <laughs> that's why it's great. That's you can't why be the you seller need a there. license. It's, that's why you need a license. And this, this is why money. you cannot, cannot, cannot look at 35 to one and say it's good. Why? Oh, because I can win 35 and I'm only risking a dollar. Wrong. That is the wrong way to look at it. So let's take a look at all of these different bets. Yeah. In fact, so Bill, some people, Bill, look at that red black one. The red black oh, yeah. one looks like it's even money. It is even. Yeah. One but to it's, one. Not, it's, it's not. It's not because there's zero and double zero. Yeah. You get about 18 yeah, out of 38 like to win that. Like, yep. Exactly. Right. Like a That's a loser. Over time, that is, that is a losing. Over bet. time, it's a loser. That's right. So here's yeah. the thing. If you were, imagine that instead of it being a roulette wheel, that you're a trader looking at a quote board that maybe has been converted to these. And you go, oh, wow, look at this one, 35 to one. Here's another one for 17 to one. Uh, let me scratch these off at the bottom that are one to one and two to one. Let me take these others. This is how traders, at least a lot of them we have found, make their decisions. But let's take a look at all of these. All right. The way that we figure that out, the single number bet, you got a one in 38 chance of winning 35. And therefore, you've got 37 out of 38 chances of losing a buck. Two number bet. Two out of 38 chances, Casino will pay you a whopping 17 bucks. And that means a 36 out of 38 chance you're going to lose your buck. And look what happens. That minus 0.05 has a significance here. What does that mean, Elliot? Over time, we're leaving with less money than we came with. <laughs> here. <laughs> so here. And, and, the, and the casino is going to, the, the longer we stay, the better it is for them. 
And that's why casinos nice are open 24 seven and don't put clocks on the wall. They want every, they want that right. wheel to spin as many times as they can. And so, find the door to get out. Right. In order to get comps, <laughs> in order to get comps in Vegas, let's say, don't they always tell you there's an, it, it's not a dollar. It's not just a dollar amount. It's a time. Uh, it's a time. Yeah. Why? Because time is the way they make time the, money. Is the money. Not on how much you bet. If right. they just said uh, you have to bet a thousand dollars and I bet a thousand dollars on one blackjack hand. And I made money and I walked away. I would fulfill that requirement. Well, your but best bet on the roulette want. table would be a red black bet of betting it all up front. Right. Minimize the risk of losing. So right. here's what's gonna, here's what's going to happen in the long run. Let's say that Elliot's sitting there uh, strategically betting on different combinations here. They all have a five cent edge against him. And I'm standing next to him flipping five cents into the trash can. Mathematically, in the long run, we are doing the same thing. So if you want a strategy for roulette, there actually is one, Stu. What is it? Well, there's another bet called the five number bet, top five numbers, sometimes called the basket bet that has, look at that, an eight cent edge against it. So I oh, often tell fun. traders, if you want to maximize, so to speak, or do the best at roulette, just, avoid the, five num just avoid the five number bet and you're going to lose your money equally yeah. fast. Well, the Bill, only strategy actually you got. Bill, I think I am doing better than you because I think I'm still getting free drinks. <laughs> so, well, that's okay. That's true. So as long as as long as I drink a drink that's worth at least five cents every time I play, I'm ahead. I suppose that you could look at it that way. But I'll be but drunk. you're still paying there for it. Some entertainment that's value true. there. There is entertainment right? value. What if every drink is worth 10 cents? <laughs> That's, I could bet three yeah, times have a, three drinks and I'm ahead. <laughs> Assuming you're still standing. But Correct. the point that we're trying to show <laughs> is we started off with this board showing all of these wonderful risk reward ratios, 35 to one, 17 to one, eight to one, all these different things. And it had nothing to do with it being a good deal. It's the fact that there's a, an associated probability. And if they are not in balance, you don't mm -hmm. want to go near them, even though somebody might say, hey, look, you're only risking one to win 35. You have to ask, what's the probability of winning? And that's where people like Stu and Elliot can certainly help traders. Because if we took this bet, there's a single number bet over time, just as you predicted, Elliot. That's a Excel demonstration right there. That's what's going to happen to you, even though you're winning 35 to 1. It has no bearing. So if somebody walks up and says, hey, do you want to trade that wins 35 to 1? tells me zero. I, I don't know. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. But too many traders base it just on the risk reward ratios. So notice that graph is not a straight line. Just <laughs> it's like far flipping from a coin, just like flipping a coin. There are spurts. Yep. You can let's win. Say we, let's say we've even won in the short run down here. Yeah. Let's say we can call them breakouts and breakdowns. If we want to look, think ahead a little bit about stock. Things will, looks, things will, looks, things will, like the S from last yeah, year. things will, <laughs> things will run for a while, one way or the other, right? But the course, right? But, but, but the direction is always going to be towards you losing all your money. It because might feel good for a while. That's the bias. But eventually you're going to lose it all. Yep. Which so, is, which is in the big picture in the, in the market world. Look, if the, if the trend, this is why the trend is your friend. If the trend is your friend and you're right. with a downtrend, then that downtrend will pay off even, you know, it's just the opposite of the trade. It's it's winning instead of losing if you're involved in Correct. a downtrend in a, in a positive fashion. Exactly. Correct. Exactly. Things we're only going to be, when, 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 well, when we're trading, when, when we're trading, we're not going to trade every second of every day. No. Right? We're only well, trading in some subset of this line. Of time. Right? Yeah. Some of this line of time. Of time. Right. Yeah. So we're, we're, when we trade, you learn knowing here. about trending and knowing about what your volatility is and what your sensitivities are, what your Greeks are, planning out your trades, because we know we're not going to be sitting there. There's no option except for a stock that has an infinite expiration. Correct. So, you, so by definition, the amount of time you're there trading or even playing blackjack, right? It's a subset. You're not going to sit there 24 hours a day forever. So you're going to capture some subset of, of the this. statistical reality. Yes. Right? So the options are priced for that overall statistical reality. Yes. But even in that case, the volatilities change, right, Bill? Oh, Don't yeah. the volatilities change as the perception of risk in the stock? Sure they do. Changes. But re remember, we're only there for some. Sure. 
some yeah. some defined period of time. Yeah. Even though you have an, an edge Absolutely. against you here, sure, there's lots of you places where money. you could have lots been on the winning side. That's yeah, right. Lots of places. Right. Yeah. So now well, hopefully our traders have so hopefully now our traders have a little bit more ammunition to think about risk reward ratios. And with that, let's go back to our chalk talk. And uh, before we do that, for anyone interested in some more education, options, training, or coaching, please check out marketrebellion.com forward slash get started. So let's go over to Chalk Talk. What was our initial question? We have two vertical spreads. One is pay four to make one. The other is pay one to make four. Same underlying, same time to expiration. Which one has less risk? If you ask most people, Stu, most traders are going to pick which one? Number what two. What they say? What would they say? They say, I'm only betting a dollar. Yeah, exactly. They're going to say it's the, they're going to say that one has less risk. It makes the most sense because you're only risking a dollar and you might make four. I've minimized my risk and I've maximized my reward. They, but now let's ask the question the that Stu that, said, that. why would somebody pay for to make one? See, that's the, that's the better insight. So let's take a look at where these prices came from. Here's a 95, 100 vertical spread priced at four where you can win one. But where's the stock? The stock is up here. One hundred two or something. Yeah. See, we can afford to have the stock sit still. We can afford to have it fall yeah. three points. We can afford to yeah. have it go up slow, medium, or fast, and that is going to net you your dollar. You've got far more ways to win, and that's still a twenty-five percent return on your money. Yeah, actually, the stock could go down a little. That's what I said. It could go down to 100. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, you could that. still win. You got positive theta. You got negative gamma. If I'm short the 100, if I'm short the 100, isn't that going to be a problem? Aren't I going to get assigned? That's actually not a, that's a, that's a gift. <laughs> as long as there's no dividend. That would be We've gift. talked about we'll that, that one before. One and a lot of people think that I don't want to sell the end of money because it's, that's a gift. That's going to give you your dollar today instead of in 30 days or 20 days, whatever. We'll it leave is. that topic for, uh, we'll leave that one coach. for another one. But good, good observation. Idea. Now let's go take a look at the pay one to make four. See, they hear it on paper, but where was the stock to get this pricing? There's your 103. Now you've got positive gamma, negative theta. If the stock moves to 106, what happens? You just Consider broke even. yourself lucky. You just broke even. Yeah. You need that stock to go from 103 to 110 to get to mm -hmm. maximum gain. Fat chance. So again, it doesn't mean that it's wrong. It just means you have to understand it's not reducing the risk and maximizing the reward. It's a high risk trade. That's why the yeah. market has bid the price down to a yeah, dollar and is leaving that nice fat $4 dollar as a reward. It's actually been, more risk. The lower dollar one is actually right. more risk. So Bill, could you go back to the previous slide with the long, with the call spread? Okay, so I'm gonna ask everybody a question. Bill, you tell me if this is the right time to do it. I hear this all the time. I would never buy an in the money call spread because I don't want to pay four to make one. To make one. Okay. But, but if I tell you, where you're going, would you sell? Would you sell, sell, would you sell a 100 <laughs> put and buy a 95 put and For, collect yeah, one? And, and collect one. Oh, I'll do that all the time. I'll do that. Right. I'll do that. So true. Exactly. I love that. So this is where you really need to understand. Buying a 95, 100 call spread for four and risking one is the same thing as selling a 195 put spread for a dollar and risking four. It's, it's the exactly. same diagram. Two different ways of saying it. It's just funny how you, the people will see those. You get paid up, just because you get paid up front doesn't mean you have less risk. Because it's remember, when you collect spread. that dollar, that's not yours. It's a liability it's spread. Yours. You have a right. $5 liability. Here you've got a $5 right. asset. Right. And, and here's how the professional takes a look at that. Hey, that guy went to sell me that put spread at a dollar. Let me take a look at the call spread. That call spread's traded at 390. I buy the call spread, I buy the put spread, and I walk away with uh, 10 yeah, cents. It. Yeah, exactly. And, I yeah. Just, and you just made a donation to the uh, marketplace. To, to, you to made the a Stu donation. Dorfman, uh, I love that. That's a, another Dining good topic Club. there, Stu. Dining Club. The Stu Dorfman <laughs> Dining Club. <laughs> Lock them into some but box spreads. That'd be a good topic. It's all price relative. That's all. It absolutely is. So I hope that that helped all of our traders and viewers out there. And if, if you got nothing else from it, just please remember that when you see, hear people say, oh, you can win four and you're only uh, risking one, it's really the wrong way to look at it. Doesn't mean it's a bad trade, but realize the reason for that pricing 
is that it's high risk and you've got a super high probability of losing that dollar. Like I say, Stu, when people throw that at me, I say, well, how about 15 million to one? Go buy a lottery ticket, pay a dollar. You can only lose a dollar, but that means it doesn't mean it's high, uh, minimize the risk. You've maximized the risk. And, and again, Bill, it's, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with betting a dollar to win for it. There is nothing, nothing wrong with that. No, no, no. Uh, you know, that's a really nice payday, a really, mm -hmm. really nice payday. And to look for those kind of spreads is is cool. There's nothing wrong with that. You just, right. you know, you got to understand the nuts and bolts of it about yeah. why it's priced lower. Why is it uh, like that? At, at so, that lower number. It just so always, presents a high risk. That's right. all. So, and if, so if you, you see a vertical spread that's 350 to make a buck 50, don't say, ooh, that's a horrible risk reward ratio. Understand mm -hmm. that the stock is up here. Both those options are in the money. Or yeah. if it's a credit spread, and, they're both out of the money. Right. And, and you there, see there's a reason in the for it. Marketplace that, that, that undermines that and, and kind of negates that higher risk and, you know, maybe in some way sort of levels out the playing field, then go for it. That's okay. Absolutely. You know, you, you just, just because the price is what it is, it doesn't mean that you have to agree with it. Right. Just because the makes market. volatility is where it is. Just like you and Elliot, when it, we were bidding can... on those games. Right. Right. That's what makes a market. Yeah. Absolutely. So good stuff. Uh, any closing absolutely. thoughts, any, any single, nugget or pearl of wisdom you'd want to give traders out there based on what we talked about. Like, like I said before, one thing that we all try to do with our students is teach them to understand where they are at any given time. In other Good. words, if I'm going to do a trade, what am I getting myself into? Okay. Uh, another quick example would be nobody would do an in the money covered call, but they would sell an out of the money put. Out of my put. <laughs> right. So you got to know what you you got to know a little bit more about what you're getting yourself into, so you have the proper expectations. And I, I know I speak for Stu because he's very good. Uh, all the coaches are great. Uh, we really spend a lot of time doing that with people. We don't yeah. want them to make big mistakes. Yeah, too many we times people to spend on they're trying to say, "Oh, pick our services because we know where the stock market's going. We right. we are better at picking stock." Get away from that stuff. Everybody right. out there has no just as good of a chance of picking good stocks as we do. The question exactly. is, how do you play it? That's yep. where the skill is. Play. Stu, yeah, any, any final me. closing comments? Stu, so uh, you know, I think Steve Levick, our guest last week, summed it up the best. Know your risk. Know your Hard risk. To, Hard to beat but that one. To yeah. Define what that risk is so you can figure out what your risk is. Right? It's not about the money. It's not about, as we showed, right? Just know how to... Uh, it's the options are very multi-dimensional, right? It's not just about up or down. It's about time. It's about mm -hmm. pricing levels. It's about changes in pricing levels. It's about interest rates. All these factors come into play. So like Elliot is saying, know where the holes are, know what you got, know what you're up against, know how you can win. And more importantly, know how you can lose. That's what <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well said. So that's the... I hope the that term, gives every the term risk manager is very prevalent in our world. You're a risk manager. You are you are not a reward manager. I like you that. You are a risk manager. It's very good. So yeah, it's about what you can lose. Yep. That's very good. I like that. So though, hopefully there's some good little bullets to take with you. And we hope that because that's what we're trying to do here in Coach's Corner, give you different perspectives, not to show you how to get a crystal ball and predict where the markets are going. It's to understand, given the cards that you've been dealt, what is the best way to play that hand? And that takes a completely different level of understanding, such as uh, Stu and Elliot uh, teach our, our traders here every day. So if you're interested, again, please go to Market Rebellion. Uh, dot com forward slash get started. And that's all that we have today. And I also wanted to send out a very big hello to Lena, who came in all the way from Chicago. So uh, great having you here for our trading group. And uh, other than that, I think we're all done and we will have to come up with a really cool new topic for next week. And we'll see all of you then next Thursday, 4 p.m. for Coach's Corner. Thanks, Adios. guys.